Here's what you missed on Fathead and Candy in the morning. Weekdays, 6 to 10 a.m. on My Country 96.1. My Country 96.1, Fathead Candy Roth. Uh, Candy out today, pre-planned day off after her birthday celebrations. And I use a plural for a, uh, you know, for real, like I, that wasn't a mistake. Uh, Saturday, her real birthday. And uh, Sunday, big party at her friend's house. We will get all the details tomorrow. Uh, weather-wise today, uh, it was a little interesting early in the morning. At about 4 in the morning, many of our listeners got an alert on their phone. Uh, the Mariches, Eastport, Manorville area, tornado warning. Um, and there were some other spots, uh, I think, earlier in the, uh, in the evening or earlier on the overnight. Uh, but that passed by, that warning passed by about 20 minutes to a half hour after it was issued. And uh, all was well, the heavy, heavy rain throughout Long Island, which is kind of tapering off towards the east end now, uh, next hour or two, give or take. And the rest of the day looking pretty good. Salt Shack. Yeah, you know, it's not bad. When we get the heavy rain and it's overnight and most people are sleeping or uh, tucked in safely in their homes, that is a good thing. Uh, Should be clear tonight. Big night, Whiskey Road out at Salt Shack and great food and drink. Come out, enjoy yourself and We're going to have a great time, so excited about that. Um, Let us give you a couple of these stories we talked about earlier in the show uh, that I wanted to bring to you. Now, this is, from what we can tell, this is the first time ChatGPT has officiated a wedding. We'll tell you how it went. Late last month, a couple in Colorado, um, they decided to go this way. Um, Reach, uh, Reese, Reese Winch and uh, Dayton Truitt. They planned their wedding in just five days. Dayton is in the army, was about to deploy. Reese wanted to go with him. Uh, her dad came up with the idea to use chat GPT and said it would be cheap, cheaper and easier than finding an efficient. Uh, so they got online and asked ChatGPT Chat GPT if it could step in and officiate uh, their wedding. At first, it said no. ChatGPT gave them a response, says, I don't have eyes, I don't have a body, I cannot officiate your wedding. They eventually convinced it that it would work. That, that's right, they were literally talking to the computer to convince it that it could do this. So they hooked it up to a speaker, put it between them, where a real person officiating the wedding would normally be. They put a robot head on the speaker with a face on it to give it some personality, Uh, and they did not know exactly what it would say until the ceremony. Their families fed info into it, and it used some of it. Like at one point during the ceremony, it thanked guests for traveling from as far away as Kansas, which was true. They also had it write up a statement that they sent to their 30 guests beforehand, where it promised to, quote, eloquently express the significance of this historic moment and the limitless possibilities that arise when love and technology intersect. There, it, it's, I, it's a little creepy, I'm not going to lie, and doesn't sound very loving or personable. Uh, there is a little bit of video of this online, if you are uh, interested, so inclined to go check it out, uh, please feel free. Uh, But yes, someone officially married by uh, ChatGPT. Um, I'm assuming they had to go to, uh, you know, the local city hall or whatever to really make it official beforehand, but uh, they are are all set. All right, here's the other one that we've been talking about this morning that uh, really, I mean, this could set a precedent, so you should listen up to this. And I don't know how I feel. I'm kind of on both sides of the fence. There was a disagreement between a farmer in Saskatchewan and a company that was trying to buy grain. Back in 2021, a buyer for the company sent a mass text to a bunch of farmers trying to buy around 100 tons of grain. So a farmer named Chris Actor called him back. They talked it through. Then the buyer texted Chris, the farmer, a message 
to confirm the contract. Chris texted back a thumbs up. But he claims he hadn't even read the contract. He was just using the thumbs up to let the guy know he'd gotten the text. Well, the deal fell through when Chris didn't deliver the grain. He was supposed to deliver to this company, and the company sued him. And Chris's lawyer, and which, by the way, I kind of agree with, argued that emojis can mean different things. So it shouldn't be legally binding. The judge did not find it that way. The judge called it a non-traditional and valid signature. you got to be careful what you're texting. So now Chris has to pay this company over $61,000 in damages plus interest. So this is interesting, right? In, in some sense, I understand you have to be careful what you're texting. A thumbs up traditionally means yes, good to go, right? It has all these meanings like we're good. Give the thumbs up. Let's go. Um, but I kind of agree with the farmer here. The farmer texted a thumbs up after he got a message saying to please confirm the contract. And the farmer, Chris, texted a thumbs up. Now, in my mind, that that could mean two things. That could mean we are good to go, like the judge thought. Or it could mean, okay, got your text. I'm going to look over the contract. I will confirm it. Basically, you know, the thumbs up is like, got it. Understand. I'm busy doing something. All right. We've all done it. I'll get the right. We end conversations sometimes with a thumbs up uh, just to kind of, you know, put a button on things. Right. And, and that's what Chris the farmer did. He, that's what he claims. He put the thumbs up and said, basically meaning I will get to it. I will look at the contract and I'll get back to you. Uh, but the judge saw it differently. So uh, the moral of the story, even if it's an emoji, a thumbs up, a simple anything, a picture you are texting back to somebody, uh, be careful. It's not just words now. It's emojis that could be binding contracts. And this guy is stuck. And uh, if he wants to take it to another court, probably going to end up costing him more than the uh, money he owes the company. So something to think about. We are at less than 20 minutes to your bald and the beautiful entertainment, everything from Nashville to Hollywood. Uh, we're going to get up to about 82. This rain clearing out, if you still have rain in your area, should be gone here in the next hour or two or so, and uh, we should be good to go. Uh, later today, Salt Shack, Cedar Beach, and Babylon, we will be out there having a good time. Whiskey Road, live on stage, exciting, a lot of fun, great food and drink, country music, prizes, We'll have our cornhole game out there for you. Let's hit the roads. My country, 96.1. Fathead and Candy in the morning, weekdays, 6 to 10 a.m. On My Country, 96.1.